Are you subbed to Raven's Rundown? Type in S for you're subscribed or type NY for not yet. And then once you type in NY, go down to the comment section and actually subscribe. That way you don't miss out on any of the videos we've got for you pretty much every single day right here on Raven's Rundown. Welcome into Ravens Rundown by Chat Sports. I am Tom Downey, breaking down the latest on the Baltimore Ravens and unfortunately some not great formal news as it relates to Tyus Bowser as head coach John Harbaugh confirmed that Bowser did suffer a torn Achilles in the season finale. The good news is that Bowser's actually already undergone surgery for the torn Achilles and the hope, and I, I do want to emphasize hope here, is that Bowser can recover in time for training camp. Now, that might be stretching it a little bit. Uh, that would be a pretty damned quick turnaround for a player who I thought had a very good season, finally had a bit of a breakout year after being a promising young player out of Houston, seven sacks, eight TFLs, not elite production, but with, with Adafi Owe opposite him, a pretty good young pairing at edge rusher. But the Achilles news means that Bowser might not be ready in time for week one. Here's what John Harbaugh had to say. Quote, yes, he did tear his Achilles. He had surgery. By all accounts, it went great. They always say that. Have you ever had a surgery that you come out and you wake up and the guy goes, it didn't go well? I guess if you woke up, it went well. So it went well. Before we move on, hold on. So Harbaugh is saying it went well because he's not dead. Just profoundly like, oh, that's a little dark there, John. Big, big energy of, of Kyle Shannon saying, I can't guarantee if we'll all be alive on Sunday. Like, yes, that technically means it went well, but that's not what we mean when we ask, did it go well? It means, was it successful? Were there any complications? Uh, like, being alive after it is like the bare minimum threshold, not like, oh, it went well because you're not dead. So, moving on. Harbaugh said, I do think it went well, and I do know Tyus. Tyus is going to work, so I'm pretty excited. I think Tyus will be back before the start of the season. I think he'll be back for training camp. That's my prediction. That's my timeline. I'm going to stick with that. Well, along that timeline, that means it went really well. Cam Akers had the remarkable recovery in less than six months from torn Achilles to being back out there. In many cases, you're not fully recovered for about a year, give or take some months, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter in the uh, example of Cam Akers. That six-month timeline is, you know, he's back in time for camp, and even that's pushing it a little bit. So I think that there is a real possibility because of the timeline that Bowser might not be back in time for week one, or could be a prime pupless candidate to begin the season, and the team takes a cautious approach. But I want you guys to shoot your shot. Are you on board with John Harbaugh saying, yeah, he'll be back in time for week one, or are you not sold like me? Type in Y for yes or N for no. Now, with Bowser at least being a question mark for this upcoming season, at least the beginning of it, I want to look at some possible outside linebacker edge rushing replacements. First, the stuff we'll get to at the beginning of the NFL offseason calendar. Free agency. Four names here. A little bit on the more expensive side for some of these. Emmanuel Ogba, I think he wants to get paid. I think both he and especially Hassan Riddick would thrive in this defense. Riddick is the one that intrigues me the most on this list. Again, price might be a bit of an issue unless you're really not sold on Bowser being healthy. Devion Clowney does fit the scheme enough, and if you want to kind of have him be almost a defensive end out to linebacker hybrid for you, that could certainly work if you want to get creative, especially once Bowser gets back. Or maybe you just re-sign Justin Houston, because the Ravens right now are passable-ish at best at edge. Odafe Owe is a stud, big fan, going to be a piece for a long time. Tyus Bowser might not be good to go for week one. Justin Houston, pandemic fear free agents. That leaves Jalen Ferguson, who he ain't that guy, and Dalen Hayes, who barely played. You can't really enter the draft with just Owe, Bowser, and Ferguson unless you're planning on drafting an edge early, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But first, what type of need in light of the Bowser news do you consider outside linebacker for the Ravens? Is it a major need? Type in M. Is it a lesser need? Type in L. 
Today's show is powered by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. You can get a 125% deposit bonus when you use promo code CHAT125 at chatsports.com slash bet. 100 bucks minimum gets you that deposit bonus. You can bet on the NFL draft, bet on the NBA, and of course, the Super Bowl. The Rams, a four and a half point favorite right now. That line actually going up in their favor. It opened at four. Over under, 48 and a half. Maybe you're buying Joe Burrow. Maybe you can never cheer for another AFC North team. I get it. Maybe you want to bet on the Rams. Regardless of how you're betting, and there are tons of prop bets available as well, do it with our sportsbook partner, BetUS, chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code is chat125. Let's hit the defensive draft options now. First up, David Ajabo, I think is a logical fit for Michigan or for the Ravens if he's there at 14. They're Michigan, D.C., Mike McDonald, now back with the Baltimore Ravens. Ojabo and Owe, who, by the way, Ojabo actually reminds me some of, of Adafa Owe coming out. That'd be a dynamic duo paired together for the long term. Arnold Ebikati, the edge rusher from Penn State, would be a reunion, too, with Odafe Owe. I don't, I don't love him at 14, trade down round two. Good option, just like Drake Jackson out of USC or MyJ Sanders out of Cincinnati. So if you don't want to spend a first-round pick again, I think some of these names right here, uh, Ebikati, Jackson, and Sanders, are good potential day two options. I think one of them is there, probably not all three, but I think at least one would be there if that's the route the Ravens want to go in the NFL draft. Speaking of the draft, who wants a Ravens seven-round mock draft? If you do, like the video right now, and we will potentially do one for you guys. I know we'll do one at some point, but if you want it quicker, those like numbers got to be high. So it's free to do. Go like the video right now. Coaching updates here. Could the Ravens lose Anthony Weaver? Denver Broncos, the D-line coach slash run game coordinator, is interviewing for the Broncos' D.C. job. He was, by the way, a candidate for the Ravens' D.C. job that, of course, has now gone to Mike McDonald. Now, I do not believe Weaver is the favorite for that gig. In fact, I do not think he gets it. I think he's maybe one of the runner-ups. Instead, I think the, Rave, the Rams' secondary coach, I think I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but I'll try it anyway, uh, Ijara Ivaro is the favorite to land that gig. If he doesn't, Weaver does make sense, and I think at some point he gets to be a true D.C. in the near future. Bobby Ingram is a coordinator at the collegiate level. The now former Ravens tight ends coach is the new Wisconsin Badgers offensive coordinator. He's been with the Ravens since 2014, was the receivers coach, then the tight ends coach. His replacement for that particular job is not yet known. There could be a, an offensive analyst promotion, or maybe they go outside the org for that hire. So as it relates to the coaching staff in 2022, how confident are you guys? Scale it for me 1 to 10. 1 being, eh, you're not sold on it. 10 being this is the best coaching staff in history. I'm not at a 10. That's because I don't trust Greg Roman. But I think overall it is a good coaching staff for Baltimore. I also want to spend some brief time here on Lamar Jackson. Tom Brady, as I assume you all know, unless you uh, live under a rock, says Lamar Jackson is next. Brady posted this on his Instagram story with the Lamar Jackson post of Brady and Lamar together. And Brady says, you're next. And then at Lamar Jackson, nice little heart emoji as well. It is almost Valentine's Day after all. I'll say this, and I'm sure it could just be platitudes from Tom Brady. But if the GOAT says you're next, that should carry weight. Should carry weight to, you know, Twitter user Brian Bunch of Numbers, who's got a bunch of shitty opinions. It should carry us to fans and media and... It should carry weight to Lamar Jackson himself. That's a nice little confidence boost, I believe, if you're Lamar Jackson, if Brady's offering you praise like that. So if you believe in Lamar as the Ravens franchise QB, I certainly do. I want you to type in LJ8 right now in the comments section. Lamar did not have a great year this year. We can all acknowledge that. Injuries, no doubt, playing a big factor in that. I do think, though, he is a dynamic quarterback who is worth paying and will be this team's franchise QB short-term and long-term. So if you agree with me, type in LJ8 in the comments section. 